Hello everyone, this is Darwell 20 and welcome to episode 44 of Darwell 20's Ah, oh, it's Soul Sand. Let's Play series, also Soul Sand. Uh, where I'm in the nether doing a bunch of mining. For fun, but mostly for profit. Oh yes. I do love the mining laser. I mean, I love most of the mods that I wrote. Mostly because, you know, I wrote them because I wanted a feature like them. But yes, I'm having fun uh, mining up a storm down here. Uh, mostly searching for ancient debris. And I actually did not do too bad. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, some junk in my inventory at the moment. Um, let's see here. I got five more ancient debris, and I'm just throwing it all yoinks, right into the old ender pouch. Uh, which is getting picked up and dropped into my refined storage system. In theory, we should go home and see about 10-ish ancient debris in there, which I hope is enough for what I need it to be right now. Uh, and ancient debris, I'm mining at Y level 15, because that's what the Googles said to do. Uh, I hope that is the right number. I wasn't sure if uh, the, the, the Y level stuff changed in the nether. Apparently it did not, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so nothing changed there in 118. I wasn't sure. It's a vanilla feature. I don't know how those things work. Um, man, I had some decent luck mining, mining ancient debris a few minutes ago, but now I start recording and all my luck has disappeared. Got some cobalt, though, so that's nice. And a ton of quartz. Tons of quartz. Not too shabby. So, this episode... Oh, there we go. Ancient Debris. Nice. Very nice. Okay, not bad. Let's go home and see, like, how we, how we did on Ancient Debris here. Because hopefully... Hopefully I got enough for what I want to do. Uh, so this episode today, what I'd like to work on is amping up power generation using FTB industrial contraptions. And in addition to that, I would like to probably amp up that quarry a bit, right? So, like, the main feature that I'm after is the quarry, right? I want to mine stuff. You know, nothing in industrial contraptions really jumps out at me as, like, hey, this is, uh, this is a machine I need to make right now. Except maybe the antimatter. I want to check that out because I'm curious. That looks fun. Uh, but that also requires what I assume to be large amounts of power because it's antimatter. Like, how can it not be? Um, so my plan is this. I'd like to check out the reactors, though I don't know what to expect from the reactors. See, now I'm getting a little bit luckier with uh, ancient debris. That's nice. Luckily, netherrack is very easy to mine. Ooh, what's that achievement? Oh, the blazing heat of the infernal dunes. Well, that's cool. I'm a little bit nervous about going up there. Well, okay, if you insist. Oh, it's all lava right above me. Might be able to sneak out here. Hooray! I survived! That was risky. Don't do that, kids. Don't try that at home. Oh, this, this biome is neat. I like this. I like this place. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm going to pop home and let's take a stock of how much ancient debris I wound up getting. Uh, so how did we do ancient debris? Hey, not bad. All right, cool. Now, what's the most efficient way that we can process this currently? Uh, blasting will get me one scrap. Uh, smelting will get me one. This guy will get me one. Arc furnace we don't have access to yet. Not really. Um, mechanical squeezer will get me one with a 75% chance at another. So mechanical squeezer might work. Uh, squeezer is the manual version of that. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, the crusher, we haven't got really into mechanism yet, but we will at some point. Um, enrichment chamber does a double, so that's kind of cool. This will give me one ingot. This will give me one ingot and three nuggets. Induction smelter gets me two scrap. Why don't I just do induction smelter? That seems like the way to go, right? I mean, yeah. I don't think we're going to get much better than that. Works for me. Two scrap. Boom. Now, what I'd like to get is some networking stuff from refined storage. 
Uh, so this guy's pretty cool, but we're gonna need netherite ingots for this. So we need, I believe, two. One um, for the network transmitter and one for the network receiver. So there's your transmitter. There's gonna be our receiver. Okay, and then we're gonna need a network card, which shouldn't be too bad. And hey, no cables required, sweet. And then what I would also like is a wireless access point. So that would be the regular wireless transmitter. We're gonna take a look at the advanced one. Actually, maybe we should make an advanced one because I think it just needs a super advanced processor, which is just a little bit of no, maybe. I'm curious how much power this requires. Um, what was that thing called again? Super doohickey? That also requires another, right? Um, I'm curious about this advanced wireless transmitter. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna make one of you and I'm gonna upgrade you to the advanced version. Oh, <laughs> how are we out of iron again? This is why I have a quarry, which isn't running yet. Guess who has to go mining again? Guess who has to go mining again? We'll be right back. All right, little bit of mining complete. And then the nice thing is, is while I mined, this thing filled up with a significant batch of energy. So I filled up all my batteries from it. Woohoo! So I'm ready to do some auto mining in that dimension. But now I wanna, now that I've got my mining complete and we've got some iron, look, it's still processing all my ores. Sweet. Did you finish processing iron? Yes, you did. Good job. Uh, let's break this guy down. So this guy's currently got a range of 48 blocks. And he's using 40 RF attack. Now, if I were to break this dude, what kind of range does the advanced wireless transmitter have? Oh, a thousand blocks. Well then, ha, that's cool. How much power does he use? A hundred RF attack? So for like two and a half times, not, yeah, two and a half times the power, I get a thousand block range. That's overpowered. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It is overpowered and I love it. Oh my goodness, that's really long range. Like that is just bananas level. Like I'm gonna be like over here long range, right? Yeah, that that's a thousand blocks. Like, holy cow. Just look at it. <laughs> that's cool. I am not complaining. That is actually pretty spiffy. All right, well, now that we've got that set up, the benefit here is that I can bring my network transmitter and receiver out to my mining dimension. So these guys are awesome, right? Network transmitters and receivers, but they are pretty power hungry, if I recall. Let's line these up over here. So the transmitter is what sends the network energy, right? Uh, so that's missing a network card. And the longer the distance, the more RF per ticket costs. So we'll have to see what this looks like across dimensions because i forget what the cross dimensional cost is but like it maxes out when it hits cross dimensional but in theory we plop down a receiver we plop down this dude and then we stick our transmitter here and then we install the range upgrades then what we do is we take a network card and we shift right click on the network receiver and it binds to that position in the dimension so then we pop out here and we stick you in the transmitter and then boom, we can see that he's connected to that location. Now how much RF a tick is that costing me? 64, that's not bad. That's not bad, that's not bad at all. So now if we pop out to our mining dimension, oh look, it's online. Sweet, how cool is that? And then I can hit tab, boom, and I've got all my stuffs. How cool is that? That is glorious, I'll take it. I'll 100% take it. All right, so now, like, are you actually running still? Oh, wow, you are. Okay, well, that's neat to know. So this whole time, this thing, I mean, well, you know what? He's not chunk loaded. That's the problem. We should probably claim the chunks. Of course, I have no idea 
I assume this is correct. That seems good enough to me, right? Yeah, that works. Now I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know if we need to only claim, like only load the chunk that the quarry's in or if we need to load them all. I always like to err on the side of caution, but I think that's a lot of force loaded chunks. I almost always override this setting though, so I can force load more than 25. I feel like 25 is not nearly enough for, for forcing chunks to stay loaded. Um, now in fairness, in absolute fairness, uh, for a server, that's not that's not too much, right? Like on a server, you don't want too many chunks loaded. But if you're playing single player and you're by yourself, that ain't that much. So, hey, are there more overclockers in here? Maybe not. Do I not have any more overclockers? I thought I had a little bit. Well, let's do this. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to steal overclockers from the extruder and from the compressor and probably from the macerator as well. And I wanna just see like how stupid this RF or this power cost becomes. Because here's what I need to do. Like, number one, I want to make sure overclockers even work. Because I don't know that they do. Boom. That seems to be doing something, right? Now, why did you jump all the way over there? What's that all about? What kind of shenanigans is that? Now, if I do this. And this. This. And this, that feels pretty good. Why are you all the way over there now? Why did he jump over there? I mean, I loaded all your chunks, right? Yes, this chunk that I'm standing in with the quarry is 100% loaded, so... I'm going to pop between dimensions again and see what happens. Because that would be a little bit of a bummer if he can't run when I'm not there, or at least can't run well. Did you skip again? No. So what's this all about? What's all the skippage about? So you have plenty of power going on now. If I threw another overclocker batch in there. Oh my goodness. That skip, he skipped again. What are you doing, Chief? You're being weird when I'm putting overclockers in. I guess we'll figure it out. I'm curious what it'll do now when he gets to this point. You're being weird, Quarry. Though I do like, right? So two overclockers we can handle, right? Now how about three? Oh, that's not enough. Oh, now that's interesting, look at that. When I took the overclocker out, he came back. Did you see? When I added, he jumped over there. When I removed, he came back. So effectively, we should probably decide like, hey, this is how many overclockers we want. And then go from there, right? So what I could just have is an ender chest, right? And make it like, you know, this one. Are we really out of obsidian? Killing me, Smalls. So yeah, this being all out of whack is gonna annoy me. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying that that's gonna annoy me. And I guess I could pause you, that's kind of cool. Or he paused, I like that. cool with that um and i can charge up more batteries by the way personal request is that when i shift click an empty battery it goes into the right slot that would be cool now that won't fill all the way down here we can snag some more obsidian remember i could absolutely automate that a little better but you know We'll get there. There's always improvements that can be made. So what I would theoretically want to do, I don't know if it's a, can I build in this space here? I guess, doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, yeah, so you're not actually doing anything. So the smart thing to do would probably be to place this here. So I only have to use one node. And then on the down, I would like you to extract. I might need overclockers for this. Two, 
Two should be enough. That'll bring me up to 32 items every half a second. That should be plenty. Oh, that works. And I can run my quarry again. And that's more than enough extraction speed. Frankly, I could probably do with that. See? 16 and 15 now. Yeah, that's plenty. That works for me. I'm cool with that. And then here, have more power. So if I wanted this guy to have more overclockers, I think I could do that. But I would need to have an EV battery box. And I would probably have to have a transformer upgrade in this. Or at the very least, a transformer between them. I'd have to see how that works. I don't know yet. Um, but long story short, we would need a way to have more than this. Because the, the energy transfer is not such that it can keep up. See? But he definitely acts weird when uh, I throw those overclockers in. The worst part of this is we're just getting so much dirt. Hey, hooray, we'll finally get stone in a minute. So that's cool. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to leave this here for a minute and then come back and see how it did. But in theory, we should see over here all the stone coming in, right? So there's all our cobble, our dirt, and everything from the miner. So we know the quarry is still working well. Now what we need to do is amp up the production of power. So what I'd like to do is check out the reactor stuff that's capable in this mod. Um, so FTB reactor, there's, there's a bunch of stuff. I hope that they were clever enough to make everything that is a nuclear reactor component look up when you search for reactor. Looks like that's a thing. So that's cool. Um, so if anybody played with IC2 back in the day, you know basically how this works, uh, but there's a nuclear reactor chamber and there's the nuclear reactor itself. The reactor goes in the middle and then you can put a chamber on all six sides. Um, if you just run the nuclear reactor, you have a small inventory space and every chamber that you add to it gives you more inventory space to put items in. The items that you put in are all here and each item does different things. Some items generate power and heat. Other items dissipate heat. And if you build up too much heat, bad things happen, Kabumi style. So the gist here is, is that we want to um, basically come up with a good amount of balance between heat generation, energy generation, and heat dissipation, right? Um, yeah, explosion's a thing, so that's cool. So I'm... My understanding is, is the person who wrote this mod basically read the IC2 wiki and designed the system based off of how the mechanics worked. So like they didn't take any code. They just said, hey, I'm going to look at the wiki. I'm going to see, you know, what, what the recommendations are on how to build a good reactor and then back my way into how the code probably worked. And then they, you know, made the reactors work that way. So in theory, it's possible that you can go look at some old IC2 reactor designs and come up with the same output. Whether or not that's actually true remains to be seen, but we're going to find out. So step one, I'm going to make a nuclear reactor. So we're going to need to add nuclear reactor, um, these guys here, right? And we're going to need some dense copper plate and reactor platings. So we should get to work on how to make this stuff. So dense copper plates is going to be in the compressor. And reactor plating is going to be this. And then lead plates. I should put these ones in here. Not that it really matters, because like I said, because we're not in exact mode, it should didn't matter, but meh. And then that, right? So um, you will be taught that the compressor does this and this. And I should add my four overclockers to the compressor here again so that you have power once more. And then you guys, well, not power, but you know what I mean. So I'm going to want seven of these. So we're missing a bunch of copper plates. Is that what it was? I thought it was just copper. Oh, yeah, it's copper plate. Okay, never mind. So that will be rolling for this guy. And we're out of patterns again. Yeah. All right. Big time win. Okay. So if I want 
seven of these, that should all happen in a nice and awesome way. Cool. Okay. I wouldn't mind making a few more overclocker upgrades as well. I feel like that would be smart. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to need some more coolant cells. What's a nice way I could automate filling up these fluid cells? That might not be a bad idea. Something fun to do. Uh, it's going to need to be something that can right-click the fluid cell onto a water source block. Uh, let me see what I can come up with. We could probably use modular routers and that activation module, right? Which one of these? Does it still have the activator module in it? It does. So if I were to put in... This should work. This should work. Um, check this out. Uh, sender module mark two. Right? So we're going to want a few of these. Cool. Yeah, this should work. Uh, in my head, it makes sense. We'll see. Um, so here's what I'm going to say. If we had a chest and we had refined storage and we had water, right? Uh, let's do it. Where should we Where should we set this up? Mm, Here-ish. Let me clear it out and get some water here. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we throw some water down. Okay, then you get a polar module that does this. You ready? So you go in the front, whitelist, and what you're going to get is fluid cells only. Okay, so if I do that, he should only be able to activate using fluid cells, right? And that's going to be the second in the line here. The first in the line will be a puller that will pull out of this chest. Okay, and you will whitelist empty fluid cells as well. So empty fluid cells will be pulled out of the chest into the modular router. Then the activator module can activate. There we go. It's C is the hotkey to open this. I knew there was a way to get into this from here. Uh, fluid cells will activate only empty fluid cells by clicking in front, right clicking in front, right? And then we can sender. And once I have one, this will work, but let's put one in here and see what happens, right? If I do that, haha, -ha, a full fluid cell, right? And then we will send her to their whitelist fluid cell of water, and that goes in here. So now when there's a fluid cell here, he'll be sent into this guy. So you ready? You ready? This will be cool. How cool is that? All right. So now what we do is we come up here and we say water cells are made as a processing method. We want one to one. Okay. And then we can put these in this crafter and it basically says put a fluid cell into the chest and you will get a water cell out. That's what we just defined, right? So this is how you manually set up crafts that aren't technically from machines, right? There's no machine that immediately does this. It's a it's a sequence of events, right, that runs. But we put this in, 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 the, in the pattern here, and now if I say, hey, I want some more water cells, okay, give me 32 of these bad boys, Immediately they go into the chest, it starts running and doing its thing, and then transferring to here. How cool is that? I mean, I'm happy with it. Are you guys happy with it? Because I think it's cool. Dire happy. That's neat. Maybe I want a little insight into this. They yeah, already lost it. Where'd it go? I'll just leave this little bit open here so that I can uh, remember how it all works. Because at some point in the future, I'm going to be like, where did I set this up again? And I'm going to be totally lost. 
So having this still here is, is probably a smart move. Just a little bit of a, oh right, that's where it is. Is that cool? And now if we pop upstairs, we should have 32 water cells. How great is that? And then we can make overclockers, which I'm going to program how to make right now. I'm just going to be like, hey, overclockers, you're made like this. Uh, and then small coolants are made like this. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could probably designate how to make the empty cells because they're cheap enough. It's just tin, and at this point I don't think we've been using tin for a whole lot, so, you know. So if I wanted a dozen of these, that should be easy peasy to make. If we didn't already have the water, it would make it. But since we do, we're, you know, we're cool. Now what's up with you? Machine doesn't accept item, huh? Who doesn't accept what now? Okay. Uh... Did I put you in the wrong thing? You are correct that the compressor doesn't accept it. Lead plate rolling machine, not compressor. Oh, did we make a rolling machine? I guess we didn't. Well, let's make one. Roller. Okay, cool. So we're going to need a couple pistons and a couple aluminum gears. And then we've got a roller. Nice. And I've got another crafter ready here. And then the roller goes down. He'll get power. And then we can move this guy. And I presume... This guy also needs to live in the roller, right? Uh, and then we're going to want a node. Let's get me a few. Come on, nodes. There we go. Let's not forget to laser wrench it like we did last episode. Okay, and then we'll backpack the rest of these guys. Cool, and then my overclockers are done. Look at that. So you can be overclocked. You can be overclocked again. So basically everybody gets four, right? That works. I'm cool with that. Oh, rolling machines actually expensive in terms of power. How much RF or energy? Your, your max input is 32, but with overclocking, even with one set overclockers, this guy's a little pricey. Meh, not the end of the world. I will get I will get more power going in here at some point, but that's kind of what we're working on, right? So let's check out transformer upgrades. Um, I probably want to make some of these guys. Now, I'm pretty sure you have the ability to make most of this, with the exception of the MV transformer, which you now know how to make, right? Um, so what this will do is let, I don't know what happens if I try to put higher tier power into things, but I assume badness happens. And I don't even want to, I don't want to mess with it too much, but I kind of am curious. So I should be able to craft two of these, right? Now, are you waiting for anything over here? Or are you pretty cool? I think you're pretty cool. So I'll get these two crafted, but what I might do is get some low tier cable, like LV cable. Okay. And maybe a basic machine. Uh, let's do let's do another macerator. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. And I'm I'm hesitant to do this too close, but I want to see what happens when. Uh, come on, give me my LV cable. Let's go. So I'm going to do this and this, right? So in theory, this is high voltage, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to put this outside because I want to see what happens here. Now, what happens when I connect these? Does anything? Nothing yet. So LV cable to an HV battery box is okie dokie smoky. 
Now, if I pop down a macerator here. Oh, oh, he burnt the cable. Okay. What about you? So that's what happens. Okay. That's neat. That's neat. Can I use this for anything? I can turn it into scrap. Sure. All right, next question. What happens if we use HV cable here? Right? And connect it to the machine. I'm just curious, like, what happens to the machines if they get too high a voltage. So this should be bad. Oh, right-click with a fuse on this machine to repair it. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. So it doesn't blow up, but that but but bad things happen. Okay. So I've got a few fuses. That's neat. Oh my, we have a lot of fuses. So I just right click and it'll repair. That's I like that mechanic. That's not too bad. Oh, and look, he's he's kind of okay now. He's still on fire, which is not great. Do you think he needs another fuse? He does not, because he's not taking them again, but he's still on fire. And what if I break and replace him? He seems okay to me. Follow-up question. Oh, now he turned into a machine block. Did you see that? I broke and replaced him while he was on fire, and he machine blocked himself. Okay. Let's try that again. Let's try that again, because that was cool. My immediate question was like, can I just break and replace him to fix him? And clearly the answer is no. So he seems to be repaired, but he still has his particles. But break and replace fix, so that might be a bug. Okay. Well, at least now we know what happens if we, you know, do things that we shouldn't do. Now, in theory, I should be able to transform or upgrade things like the roller. Now, did you finish your stuff? I think you did. All right, well, that's good at least. Um, but I should be able to throw transformer upgrades in there. Let's test it with the macerator just to make sure. Um, now, in previous versions of, of IC2, at least, um, you needed transformer upgrades per transformer change, right? So this guy can accept low voltage, right? There's four tiers of voltage. This guy can accept low voltage. Then there's medium, high, and extreme. So if we want a low voltage machine to be able to accept high voltage, it's two jumps, right? Low to medium and medium to high. So we're going to want to put two transformer upgrades in there, okay? And then we should be able to connect him with gold cabling without a problem, see? And now he's got power and he's happy. And if we were to throw some cobble in there, because I'm pretty sure cobble's on the list of things that you can process, and we throw some overclockers in there, he should be able to run pretty darn fast at this point. I don't want to actually use these, but I want to borrow them from elsewhere just to see how crazy this can get. Now, in fairness, there's also block forms. Oh, wow, look at that. That's not bad. Sweet. Okay. Well, that's good to know, at least. Oh, yeah, don't take that out before you're ready. That's funny. Okay. And I got my macerator because I clicked it fast enough. Good, good, good. Okay. So now, you know, if I needed my roller to run faster, which I did before I, you know, spend a whole bunch of time testing it, but you get the idea. I could have absolutely hooked this up to HV power and, and called that a win. Cool. All right. So how are, are you still running, by the way? You're probably dead. You're probably out of power. But let's just check out the reactor real quick um, as we wrap up the episode here. So you need a couple of things. You need a iridium circuit. Oh my, okay. So you're gonna need an iridium alloy. That doesn't look so bad. You guys can probably get your overclockers back again. This way at least everybody's overclocking. Are you good on power? You're pretty good on power. So iridium alloy. I really just kind of want to see what this looks like. So you're scheduled for a few things. Okay. And then we're probably going to have to wrap up the episode, if I'm being honest.
Yeah, you're still processing a bunch of stuff. Let's come back when it's ready. All right, so iridium alloy, not terrible. Um, and then for the reactor that we want, we need an iridium circuit, which is not bad. And then we needed a basic generator. Should be good to make a nuclear reactor. Sweet. Now, in theory, nothing should happen when I place this. Cool. Question mark. Insert fuel rods to check runtime. Oh, neat. All right. Inventory heat paused, running. Okay, well, that's cool. I'm curious about that. Let's play with this next episode, because um, this looks interesting. I, I want to see how the nuclear reactor process works. So how about for now, Dull 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time, and uh, we'll see how nuclear reactors work. Uh, but in the interim, uh, I'll learn a little bit on my own, but probably not. We're going to learn it together. Yeah, it sounds like a better time, right? You guys want to just learn with Dyer, right? Hey, actually, you know what? Not for nothing, but this quarry is still running. So that's kind of nice. Look at us go. Not bad. Look, we're almost going to get to the point where we start getting a payoff. We're going to have some iron come in soon. I'm very excited about that. All right, wrapping up point. Double 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.